Hi guys, how are you today? Welcome back to my channel Adventures in America. If you are new to my channel, my name is Jocelyn and I'm a dual citizen of the United States and the Philippines. We are going to discuss a lot of things today in this video. First of all, will US leave the travel ban? And are there updated travel restrictions? I have a little bit of a good news because the Biden administration has announced that they will develop a system where all fully vaccinated passengers from all over the world will be allowed to enter the US. However, the date has not been set when this system will be put in place. There are currently 35 countries or territories included in the travel ban. And those passengers coming from this list of countries who have stayed there exclusively for the last 14 days will not be allowed to travel in the U.S. except U.S. citizens and other residents. However, since there is a travel ban and some of the countries included in the visa waiver program are also in the travel ban, the requirement is that if you wanted to enter the U.S., you must not be in any of those listed countries in the travel ban in the last 14 days for example you are a national of switzerland and switzerland is currently under the european schengen area included in the travel ban if you wanted to visit the u.s you must not be in switzerland in the last 14 days before coming to the u.s there must be another third country prior visiting the u.s so you will be allowed to travel you will be subjected to a second inspection but it doesn't mean that you will be denied entry however since you are coming from those list of countries included in the travel ban the customs and border protection will have to take a look at your passport and where have you been in the last 14 days? I'm also going to give you an update regarding the travel ban. There are several countries in the world whose travelers are not allowed yet in the US. There are also questions regarding unvaccinated travelers and also those who received a Sinovac vaccine or other kinds of vaccine administered outside the US. So we're also going to discuss if they are allowed to enter in the US. Tourists are allowed in the US regardless of vaccination status. Also, the quarantine requirements are only recommendatory in nature and they are not compulsory or mandatory. So B1 or B2 visa holders are allowed to travel in the US unless your country is included in the travel ban and you are a traveler from these banned countries in the last 14 days. Based on several presidential proclamations from former President Trump and President Biden, they established restrictions of these travelers coming from these countries in the last 14 days. So here are the list of banned countries. Here are the countries included in the travel ban. China, Iran, European Schengen Area, United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, Brazil, South Africa, and India. However, there are exceptions to the travel ban. If you are a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident of the U.S., you are allowed to travel back in the U.S. even though you are in these countries in the last 14 days. There are also other exceptions. The additional exceptions are based on national interest exceptions in the presidential proclamations. Effective April 8, 2021, the Department of State provided blanket exceptions to K visa holders and immigrant visa holders from the list of banned countries. Also, effective immediately, all K1, K2, K3, and K4 visa holders are now allowed to enter the U.S., but it will be based on the eligibility requirements. Also, presidential proclamations on labor restrictions issuing visas for H-1B, 
H2B, J1, and L1 visas are no longer in effect. So this means that these visa holders, those holders of H1B visa, H2B visa, and J1 and L1 visas can now enter the U.S. regardless of the visa effectivity. Let's talk about the travel restrictions in the U.S. As of January 26, 2021, all inbound passengers to the U.S. including U.S. citizens and permanent residents and all other foreign nationals must have a negative COVID test within three days prior to departure or documentation or proof of recovery within 90 days before departure. And all passengers two years old and above are required to have this negative COVID test or proof of recovery. Also, U.S. does not require passengers to be vaccinated before coming to the U.S. If you are vaccinated, it will affect the recommended quarantine requirements. So we're going to talk about the quarantine requirements later on in this video. But for now, we're going to talk about the requirements for the negative COVID test before flying and also the proof of recovery within 90 days. There are requirements to the negative COVID test before you can board your flight. And here are the specific requirements regarding the negative COVID test. The negative pre-departure test must be a viral test. It could be an RT-PCR test or an antigen that was conducted on a specimen collected within three days prior to flight departure from a foreign country. The negative test must be approved or authorized by the relevant national authority for the detection of SARS-CoV-2. Now, the qualifying test result documentation must confirm that the personal identifiers such as the name and birth of the person traveling must match the test result and the travel documents such as the passport. Number two, the test performed must be a viral test. Number three, the viral test or the test performed must be done within three days prior to flying in the U.S. Also, the statement must contain negative or SARS-CoV-2 not detected or COVID-19 not detected. If the test result says invalid, then it is not acceptable. If a passenger has recovered from COVID-19, you must provide proof of documentation of your recovery. This includes like a positive viral test or a positive COVID test and a letter from a public health official stating that you have been cleared from COVID. The document of recovery from COVID-19 means that the passenger has presented documentation of a positive test result and a signed letter on official letterhead that contains the name, address, and phone number of a licensed healthcare provider or public health official stating that the passenger has been cleared for travel and the positive test occurred within the last three months or 90 days prior to flight departure to the U.S. And personal identifiers on the positive test result and signed letter match the personal identifiers on the passenger's passport or other travel documents. And the test must be a viral test and the test result states positive or COVID-19 detected are the quarantine requirements after arriving in the U.S. Please take note that the quarantine requirements are only recommended and not mandatory. Also, those passengers who are fully vaccinated, but first let's define who are these fully vaccinated persons. These are persons who receive the vaccine or the first and second dose and there is a lapse of two weeks after receiving the last dose, then that person can be considered fully vaccinated. And if you receive the first dose and only dose required, then after the lapse of 14 days, then you may be considered as fully vaccinated. 
The acceptable vaccines are those approved by the US FDA or those approved for emergency use by the World Health Organization. For those fully vaccinated, after arriving in the US, you don't need to quarantine, but it is recommended that you get a test three to five days after arriving in the US. Now for those unvaccinated, after coming to the US, the recommended quarantine is seven to 10 days and these are only home quarantine. And you need to get tested three to five days after arrival in the US. Please take note that the mask mandate has been lifted for fully vaccinated persons effective May 13. However, there are state law or federal law or local regulations that still require a mask. However, the mask mandate is still in effect on public transportation here in the U.S. Here is a joint statement regarding the mask mandate on public transportation, which is still in effect as of May 14, 2021. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, Transportation Security Administration, TSA, and the U.S. Department of Transportation remind the traveling public that at this time, if you travel, you are still required to wear a mask on planes, buses, trains, and other forms of public transportation traveling into, within, or out of the United States and in U.S. transportation hubs such as airports and stations. Also, CDC guidance is clear that fully vaccinated people are safe to travel and can resume travel. Now, let's talk about the advisory from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, effective May 22nd, regarding the travel of U.S. citizens abroad with expired U.S. passports. If you're a U.S. citizen abroad and you have an expired passport, you may be allowed to travel back into the U.S until December 31, 2021. However, the expired passports cannot be used from U.S. citizens coming from the U.S. to travel to an international destination. And there are also specific requirements before you can avail of this. Here are the specific requirements. Travelers qualify for this exception if all the following are true. First, they are a U.S. citizen. Number two, they are currently abroad seeking to return to the United States. Number three, they are flying directly to the U.S., a U.S. territory, or have only short-term transit through a foreign country on their return to the U.S. or to a United States territory. Number four, their expired passport was originally valid for 10 years, or if they were 15 years of age or under when the passport was issued, their expired passport was originally valid for five years. And number five, their expired passport is undamaged and in their possession. Also, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention made an announcement regarding the importation of dogs effective July 14. That effective July 14, 2021, no dogs arriving from rabies high-risk countries will be allowed entry into the U.S. The temporary suspension also includes dogs that have visited a high-risk country in the past six months. The list of rabies high-risk countries can be found on the CDC website. However, there are also exceptions. You can check the exceptions also under the CDC website. Guys, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for watching. And if you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Again, thank you guys for supporting my channel. And I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.